Well, here we are, the Sudoku guy, with our last lesson. And it's another lesson called, Whenever you're stuck, you've got nowhere to go, here's another suggestion. In other words, similar to the last lesson, but this time we say, if that number doesn't work, then the other number will, providing everything else is correct. But if you look at this puzzle in front of you, boy, or behind me actually, <laughs> it, there's a lot of little numbers, and that's what happens when you get to more difficult puzzles. And here's a suggestion. I have here a sheet, and what I've done is printed out a sheet with large cells so that it's not quite as messy. Bearing in mind, when some people do a puzzle like this, they like to use a computer. But if you don't use a computer, um, you may want to go outside the puzzle and put all your numbers out in here that before you, to work out what you've got to put in here. You can do that too, or you can go by memory. So you've got those choices. Now today, we're looking at an underlined pair. Now let me revise. An underlined pair is usually um, a result of going outside the puzzle. An underlined pair actually has only two numbers, and you know that it's only those one of those two numbers that can go in that cell. And that's why I put a line under them. You probably notice me doing that quite a bit. If you look at this puzzle, we have several of them. We have one here, we have one there, we have one down in here, we have uh, one there. So there's, you, you usually get an underlying pair somewhere. So the whole idea is if, if one number works, then the other one doesn't. Or if one doesn't work, the other one will. And so again, like you did in our last lesson, we decide to choose a particular underlying pair that you think is going to get you somewhere. Well, I've chosen for this puzzle this 4-8. Now, it can either be a 4 or it can be an 8. We're going to try each of them and see what happens. I'm going to start off with the 4. So I'm going to put a 4 in here, and I'll use red so you can see what I'm doing. Where we are, 4, 8. I'm going to put a 4 here. And with that 4, what are the ramifications? Well, this becomes a 1. So we'll put a 1 in. This becomes, therefore you cancel this one, and that becomes a 3, 4 matching pair. If you've got a 1 here, this becomes, there's a 1 there too, so that becomes a 3. So we have to put in a 3. If that, because that's a matching pair, this has to become a 1. Now, then this block here, because that is a 1, this will have to become a 6. And because that's a 6, if we go along the row, there's another 6 here, so it can't be a 6 there, it becomes a 3. And this becomes a 1. Well, that was, we're getting somewhere, somewhere, so far we're getting there. Let's have a look at uh, this block again where we started. Well, because that 8 is no longer there, the only place you can put an 8 is there, so I can do that. And therefore the 7 has to go down here, or it has to go down in here, and uh, that 1 will make this a 2. Wow, we're making some progress here. Let's um, look at something else. Oh, look, here's this 4. That 4 means that this is going to be a 7. So we can rub that out. That 7 makes this a 4. That 4 makes this a 7. Now I just saw something down here. See this 3? That makes this 3, a f this 3, 4, a 4. Now because that's a 4, this becomes a 3. Because that's a 3, this becomes an 8. And this becomes a 3. 
Oh, we got trouble in River City. This is a problem. We can't go any further because guess what? See this column here? We have got two threes. So using a four there didn't work. I'll be back in a second to redo this and show you what happens when you use an eight there. Because remember we had a four and eight there. Well, here is the same puzzle, same little numbers, but this time using the four eight, instead of using the four, we're gonna try with the number eight. And I'm gonna use the red so you can see it easy as to what we've been doing. And we'll start off with an eight here. That means we can get rid of the four eight. It makes it less cluttery. Now a lot of people don't do that. They just put a line through it or something like that. It becomes a very messy page, but if you like doing it that way, that's fine. But I'm going to rub them out today because it makes it easier for you to see on this board. If that is eight is gone, that eight is gone. So this becomes a seven. If that becomes a seven, this no longer is a seven. Therefore, now what about a four? Here is a four and it goes right along the bottom here. So the four has to go there. And that four means that we have a, a three by three here. It's a one, two, and a three. And the one, two, and a three means that we know that a one, two, and a three need not be over here in this line, in this row. So I can get rid of the one, twos, and threes over here so it's less cluttery. I can rub that one out. There's a three I can get rid of. There's another three I can get rid of. There's another one I can get rid of because we know there's going to be a one, two, and a three in there. That's a little neat thing to keep an eye out for. And this will be a six, seven, nine, trip, uh, um, three by three as well. Well, with that in mind, let's see what we can do. If I look at that four, this becomes a three. So we'll put the three in there. If uh, I look at that three, this up here becomes an eight. That becomes an eight. Therefore, this becomes a three. Okay. If that's a three, this is no longer a three. And this is no longer a three. And this, because of this three, this is no longer a three. And we're really getting somewhere now. Now, this is interesting. Have a look at this, folks. This three here means that this has to be a six down here. If that's a six, we can get rid of the other sixes in this block. So we're getting rid of all these little ones. And when you get rid of them this way, it's easier to see what's left. Now, let's go on. Oh, here's something. Here's a seven. Here's a seven over here. So that means that this is a four. Is there a four down in here we can get rid of? No, up in here we can have a seven. So that becomes a seven. And this becomes a four. And we've got that whole block done. Isn't that interesting? So, is there a four down here we can get rid of? Yes, we can't use that four anymore. So this becomes a, th a one. Now, that means we can get rid of this one and that four. And we can get rid of one, uh, this one and that four. So this becomes an eight. If that's an eight, then this becomes a seven. Oh boy, we're really moving along here. If that becomes a seven, this can be removed. So we have a four nine there. And because that's an eight, this is an eight. And that is a four nine too. I've just noticed something. Did you notice this? And this is a way of checking. Well, I've said a four nine and a four nine, but have a look up here. Remember we did this in an earlier lesson? We have a four nine on the right in that block. We have, we, we could have a nine down in here, I think. Well, we have to have a nine. If that's going to be a nine and that's going to be a nine, this is going to be a nine. 
So we can get rid of that 7 because we've got the 7 already up there. So that becomes a 9. So now we have 4, 9 on the right, 4, 9 on the left. This has to be a 4, 9. So to make it neat, I'll just simply redo it neatly so we can see them very easily. And you don't have to have all those other little numbers in there. 4, 9, 4, 9. Remember we had a whole pile of little numbers in there. We've eliminated them all. We're down now to this pattern. Right, left, center using two numbers. Now, let's push on. This 7 here means that this has to be a 6. So we'll make it a 6. And I think that completes that column, doesn't it? Fantastic. And now we've only got one left in this block and it We've got a 6 and a 9 already, so it has to be a 7. You know, I did this a couple of days ago, and sure enough, every time you do it, you'll find it, you'll go a different route. And now I have this time too. Let's see what happens. Um, we've got a 4, 9 there and a 4, 9 there. We've only got 3 left in here. Well, guess what? We've got a 3 here. A 9 there, so we don't need the 9 anymore. We can get rid of that one. We can get rid of this 9. And because of that uh, situation here, we've got a 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. We've got another 3 by 3, which is fair enough. It's only what's left. But I've just seen something else here. Because this is a 6, this becomes a 1. If that becomes a 1, that's in this block, this becomes a 3. If that's a 3, then this becomes a 1. And here we go when the advantage of having a, a 3 by 3, you can usually get a more. Because this 3 was this 1, 3, that becomes a 1. Therefore, this becomes a 2. And this becomes a 3. And that's all because we recognize that as a 3 by 3 and we recognize that this 6 made this a 1, which made that a 3, which made that a 1, 2, 3. Bang, 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 bang. Now, because of that 3, I can get rid of this 3. That 3 causes that 2. So we now have a 2, 9 here. Now, here we have, uh, we've got a 3 there. We can get rid of this 3. Well, that's interesting. By getting rid of that 3, we have a 1, 2, and a 1, 2, and a 1, 3. This 1 means that this is going to be a 3. So we're now left with a pair uh, of 1, 2s, matching pair. Now, it's interesting to note here that we've got a whole pile of numbers here, and yet there's only one left, or two left. If I look at this number here, 8 cancels that number out, so that becomes a 9. I uh, didn't see that earlier, but we could have. It's still working out, though. That becomes a 9, and this becomes an 8. Matching pair, the value of a matching pair. And that 8, left, center, right, works out. And if that's the case, the only number left in this whole column is a 6. If we count 1, 2, Three, four, five, six is missing. So we can, we know ones can go, so we can put the six in there. Now let's see what the ramification of that is. We have a top, we have a middle. This has to be a six. So we can make that a six, and therefore this becomes a one. And if that becomes a one, this has to come, become a two. That becomes a two. And because that's a 2, this becomes a 1. I think things, things are looking good now. We, no, that, yes, that's right, 1. So we have a top, bottom, middle. And because of that 2, look at this. This becomes a 9. That becomes a 9. And therefore, this becomes a 2. And because this is a 2 and a 2 there, I just want to give you a little clue. If, I'd, if you'd have gone ahead with the 4 and uh, continued on, you may have found that this 2 and this 2 are the same as it is this way. And when you get that situation, like this, if you get 2, it doesn't matter whether you use a 4 or an 8, that you know for sure that that is a 2, no doubt about it. 
Now let's, there's a bit more to cover here. Let me see here. We've got a four, 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 nine, four, nine. There's an eight here. That's interesting. That means that this has to be a four. If that's a four, this becomes an eight. Eight, eight, eight. Correct. Now, because of that four down in here, this becomes a nine, because we're going to have two fours in the row. And this becomes a four. And I think we've done it. Let's have it stand back. I'm looking so close at it sideways. Yeah, we did it. And it's so exciting when you try something like that little technique and it works out. Remember, it's either one or the other number will work if all the numbers, little numbers as well, are correct. So that's the end of the course. I'd like to say a big thank you for those of you who have taken the time to follow me all the way through this adventure. And it's only one thing I ask. If you think it's going to be, if you think it's worth it, tell your friends. So, au revoir, bye for now.